Hey everybody, it's Party Elite, and today I'd like to go over some important tips that might help you in your Battletech playthroughs. Some of these tips might sound obvious, and some will hopefully come as a surprise. Either way, let's not waste any time with a long intro, let's dive right into it. Evasion is your best friend. Maybe a bit of a hyperbole to kick things off, but evasion is an extremely important tool that will increase the survivability of your mechs. Evasive pips are applied to your mechs during movement, and the number of pips added vary based on the distance moved, and skills that the mech warrior within might have. Each evasive pip on a mech makes it harder to hit, implying that the mech is evading fire. So when it's time to move your mechs around, pay close attention to how many evasive pips they're gaining. One tile can make the difference between life and death. Hell, before you put a mech warrior in a mech, keep your eye on the skills they have available to them. Mech warriors with high piloting skills will have access to extra evasive pips or allow them to generate more with less movement. This can be especially helpful for your light mechs that rely on the enemy missing shots rather than heavy armor for protection. Naturally, if evasion can help you out, it can also help the enemy, which means evasion is your worst enemy. Just like evasion makes it hard for the enemy to hit your mechs, your mechs will have a harder time hitting enemy mechs with high evasion. It's pretty clear. So you need to learn to either reduce it or avoid it entirely. Each time a mech is fired upon, no matter the size of the payload, the damage done, or even if it misses, the targeted mech loses an evasion pip. This makes multi-target fire extra valuable when you might want to spread the love a little bit by killing one mech and then setting the next target up for hits, and it also adds value to attacks with weapons that have a low hit chance. Apart from that, don't be afraid to use the sensor lock ability to not only keep an eye on an enemy mech, but also to remove two of their evasive pips, making it easier for other mechs to hit. Weapons classified as support weapons, such as machine guns, flamers, and small weapons, also ignore evasion completely. And finally, remember that melee attacks not only ignore evasion completely, but also remove a pip, just like any other attack, and they also trigger attacks from your support weapons. On which note, melee is extremely useful. When issuing a move order, you can move into an enemy mech that's close enough to order a melee attack. This type of attack ignores any evasive pips that the mech might have, opens fire with your support weapons, reduces an enemy's evasive pip as discussed, but it also damages mech stability and doesn't increase heat levels on the attacking mech. This means you can output some damage without having to worry about overheating, making an enemy easier to hit and potentially topple it over or at least slow it down by making it unsteady all at the same time. Landing a hit also removes the guarded trait, some things that improve the defensive capabilities of a mech. Death from Above, or DFA, is a melee alternative triggered by jumping onto an enemy mech, and it can cause a lot of damage, but it is guaranteed to damage your mech's legs, so keep that in mind. Pay attention to firing angles. Direction of damage is extremely important in Battletech. Mechs are weakly armored on their backs, for example, so if you can get behind a mech without stretching yourself too thin, or if you can bait a mech to expose its back, you can cause a lot of damage. Otherwise, firing in from the sides of a mech is more likely to do damage on the side you're firing upon rather than the center or the other side, that's just logical. So if the dice gods have focused your damage to one side of a mech, or if a particularly threatening weapon is on a specific side of an enemy mech, consider focusing on it from the angle to focus damage accordingly. Keep in mind that this applies to you, and so it needs to be used defensively as well. Say you have a weakened side. Make sure you face it away from the enemy when giving a move order, or make sure you protect damaged sides with cover to keep them safe. This is especially important when considering your mech's legs. If it loses one, the mech can no longer sprint. If it loses both, it's out of the engagement. You can check which angle you're firing in from by paying close attention to this ring below enemy mechs. Manage turn orders. Initiative and turn orders are key in turn-based games, and they need to be treated as such. While it can't be set and it isn't randomized, you can take actions to benefit your specific composition as needed. Light mechs typically go before medium, who go before heavies. Keep that in mind before you block movement off because of oversight. To see where a mech sits in the turn order, just take a look at this number here. You can see it on enemy mechs too, allowing you to assess imminent threats. The higher the number, the sooner the mech goes, and if the numbers are equal, either mech can go. Use reserve to hold off on your moves till the next phase, allowing you to react to enemy movements rather than allowing them to react to yours. With a Master Tactician trait, reserving a mech will also reduce stability damage, helping a mech recover from a potentially dangerous situation. You can also affect enemy turn order. Some attacks will reduce initiative on a targeted mech, and this can really mess an opponent's plans up. When it comes to turn orders, there are some specifics to consider too. Remember evasive pips? 
Imagine using sensor lock on an enemy mech that's going to move again before any of your mechs are able to fire on it. Wasteful. And while it might feel like the enemy mech closest to you is the primary threat, you might want to try and destroy the enemy mech that is about to move next rather than the ones that have already moved. Line of sight is key. Knowledge is power, knowing is half the battle, and you can't shoot something if you don't know it's there. Scout mechs are usually light, fast mechs ideally with sensor lock able to move forward and find a nice hiding spot from where to light up the enemy. This then allows your long range mechs with indirect weapons to fire on the lit up enemy mechs even though they don't personally have line of sight. As engagements begin, you'll notice that even weapons that don't fire in a straight line benefit from having line of sight from shooter to target, but there's no harm in knowing what the enemy has and what they're up to. Line of sight also comes into play at closer ranges in a few different ways. When giving a move order, there are a few types of lines to consider. Straight red lines mean there's a direct line of fire. Arced red lines mean there is an indirect line of fire. Red lines that change to a deeper red halfway down the path or so and they have a little red eye over where that change happens imply an obstructed line of fire, while white dotted lines mean there's line of sight but none of your weapons can hit the target from where you're about to end up. A red eye above an enemy mech means it can see you. Keep all of this in mind alongside turn orders to make your moves. Focus Fire whether on a micro level or on a macro level, focus fire is very important in a game like this, and defeat in detail is not only a viable tactic, it is an important one. If an enemy mech has separated itself from the herd, and you're able to eliminate it before the enemy regroups, then do it. A half-damaged mech can still cause damage from range or in melee, so assess the situation and wipe damaged mechs out accordingly. Using multi-target to lightly damage three separate mechs doesn't really help unless you've split your lance apart, so use it instead to destroy one target and then damage the evasive capabilities of your next target. All this applies on a micro level too. Think like a boxer. An enemy mech more hurt from one side than the other? Focus in on that side. A specific part getting low on armor? Focus on that part. If you can get called shots in, consider the values. Headshots and leg shots are harder to hit, but they can remove a mech from play while maintaining a better amount of salvageable parts in single player. Alternatively, you can focus on the central torso, or CT, as destroying that instantly takes the mech out. And if you're worried a mech is going to survive through a bunch of focus fire, maybe try to disarm it instead, literally and figuratively, of its most threatening weapons. Manage status damage. Remember that scene in Robocop with the stairs? There are more ways to take a mech out of commission than straight damage. Stability and heat are two factors that come into play a lot, and there are many factors that act upon them. When a mech gets too hot, it'll suffer structural damage and put itself in a rough spot. Or, if a mech takes too much solid projectile or melee damage, it might lose stability, becoming unsteady, affecting movement and accuracy, or worse, falling down and needing to get up at the cost of movement points while also exposing itself to called shots while it waits to get up on its turn. Using jump jets and laser weapons generates a ton of heat, and being in hot or atmosphere-free biomes reduces the effectiveness of heat sinks. On the flip side, cold biomes or a quick dip in a nearby water source help heat sinks to varying degrees. Walking through rough terrain, meanwhile, makes a mech more susceptible to stability damage for the turn, and losing a leg causes a permanent reduction in stability by a pip. Using brace at the end of a turn can completely remove all instability, however, except for the permanent reduction, of course. Just like you need to keep an eye on these critical stats, the enemy does too. Use flamers and solid projectiles and melee to heat up or topple over mechs that might survive longer through conventional approaches. Quick related sidebar, don't always alpha strike. That is to say, if firing all your weapons will cause you to overheat for minimal tactical gain, consider turning off some of your laser weapons to minimize heat levels. And yet, there are times when you're better off cooking your mech warrior a little bit if it means alpha striking and destroying a very dangerous enemy mech. Use terrain. Your biggest ally and your biggest foe, apart from your inner demons, are the terrain. This tip is simple but easily overlooked. Use terrain to block enemy line of sight and lines of fire. Use high ground advantages when it makes sense, use forests for extra cover, water to reduce heat, marsh to increase stability, and roads to move faster. 
force your enemy onto rough terrain, deny them access to water, consider also the biomes that you're fighting on. Don't take flamers in an ice cold biome, and maybe leave lasers and jump jets behind on extremely hot ones. Learn your ranges. This one is probably a pretty obvious one, but try to learn what your ranges look like on the map without the need for the very informative guides you're given when you're commanding your mechs around. More important than that, to a degree, is understanding and accepting the fact that your weapons will sometimes have a minimum effective range. Weapons such as long-range missiles or LRMs will do a lot worse from point-blank ranges, for example. This is another example of when multi-targeting can come in handy. If an enemy mech is in your grill, you can use your other weapons to focus down on it and use your ineffective weapons elsewhere for a higher hit chance than you'd get at point-blank ranges. There you have it, 10 tips that should get you off to a great start. Hopefully there were some things in here that caught you off guard, and if you'd like to see more Battletech content, make sure you subscribe to this channel. And if you have any thoughts for what else needs to be covered, and you want to see more tutorial videos, let me know down below in the comments. Until next time, thank you very much for watching, and cheers.